What's up, guys? It's What's CNL. Up? It's been a minute. Back again. We're going through some shit in the world, so oh, we thought man. it'd be a good time to throw down some words of wisdom. In these uh, troubling, trying times of... It's very weird. What do you think of all that's going on? Between all the, all the, all the big cats and <laughs> COVIDs and... Uh, COVID and cats. All these types of things, man. Uh, all the uh, the uh, uprising in uh, internet and telephone scams because of it. Um, what? What a crazy world, man, that, that we are a part of and living in right now. Yeah, did you hear about the people in Colorado that are knocking on the door with uh, hazmat suits and robbing people? Yeah. Going into their house and robbing them? Yeah, that's 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 one of them scams. People are taking advantage of all the hysteria. The conspiracy theorists the pandemic. are going nuts right now. Oh, dude. Uh, apparently it's uh, uh, this is revelation. This is the mm-hmm. end. Yeah. Guess who's the antichrist? He's wearing a nice suit. He's a man of business. My wife and I watched. Um, what was it? It was a, a little mini documentary on the History Channel about Nostradamus predictions. Right. I totally. And seen it. Uh, Isaac Newton supposedly knows when the world is going to end, or knew right. when the world was going to end. He said Armageddon would start in 2060. And he had all these math calculations, and oh, it showed his equations and stuff. He 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 says he figured out that these events that Nostradamus has predicted will lead to the to Armageddon in 2060. Oh, really? That's what he says. Well, so he was off by a little bit, a little bit, about forty years, about forty years. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting because what we wanted to talk about tonight is Joe Exotic. We want to talk about uh, oh, it's yeah, it's Joe a Exotic. new documentary on Netflix um, called The Tiger King, right? And we just watched the first episode. I didn't. I I thought that this was just some silly thing you were telling me about that wasn't. I thought it was scripted. And then the more you talked to me about it, I was like, no way. It, it like, came off so fucking scripted. When I I woke up at two in the morning to my wife watching this, and I was like, on the third episode, mm-hmm. it looks so fake. So scripted, it was unbelievable to Google it and find out that this is a real, it's true real. crime drama. It's actually drama. real, um, and it. <laughs> but it's so <laughs> when you watch it, it's so funny. Uh, it is. It is a. It is a documentary about a man. the The main character, basically, in the whole documentary, is named Joe Exotic, and he Joe owns Exotic. like this tiger, like big exotic cat sanctuary mm-hmm. in Oklahoma. Yeah. And he has a rival who is this woman named Carol uh, Baskins. Carol, Carol Baskins. Baskins. Yeah. She's in Tampa, Florida, and she's got a cat sanctuary called the Big Cat uh, Rescue. Yeah. The, the Big, Big cat, cat Rescue. Rescue. It's quite famous. Um, it's it's on in the Internet and to give you worldwide. to give you a short. We're, we're just we're going to get into some other stuff. Before we talk about that, that's going to be our main. Right. That's what we want to talk about is that documentary because it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. If you get a chance, watch it. If you have Netflix, it's it's the perfect time killer. It has, what, seven episodes. Oh, man. It's one series. And you're wrapped in it the first two minutes. Oh, you just... my God. It's it's. I laughed so fucking hard when you're not supposed to laugh. Right. Uh, <laughs> we'll get into it. We'll get into it a little bit. I think uh, one thing that's happened since we've, uh, you know, we've taken a break a little bit. What we're gonna do is, I would like to discuss Corey, oh, no. Fe- the oh. Corey Feldman documentary. I, I thought I smelled Crisco. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really did. I, how did I know this was coming? It the the if you haven't seen the Rape of Two Corys, My Truth, the Rape of Two Corys, you have to. It's on. It's on YouTube now. A lot of people. That's paid. legit. What it's called, the rape of the, two quarters. It's my truth, the rape of two quarters. Oh my god! If you type it into YouTube, it's the first video that pops up, and it's about almost two hours long, I think. But he basically made a documentary about who raped Corey Haim, who raped them both, basically, like all these uh, elitist pedophiles in right. Hollywood. He named six names. When before I got to see the documentary. The list was out on Twitter and everything about who who the names were, and Bob Saget was one of them. For real, it Bob blew Saget. it blew my mind. But he's not in the documentary. If you watch the documentary, huh. but if you look up Bob Saget pedophile, Bob Saget pervert, look into that. Since 2010, 
people have been talking about how creepy he is. And I knew I had watched his stand-up but special. That doesn't make him a pedophile. <clears throat> no. I, mean, I never uh, I never once thought that Bob Saget was a pedophile. I've never heard anything about Bob Saget being a pedophile. And I watch TV and shit. I know about his jokes, about him talking about fucking the cast of oh, well. uh, Full House. <laughs> sure, know. sure. Uh, he has a lot of weird jokes that are very offensive if you're in the right mood. I didn't care. I thought it was funny, but if he's a pedophile, it's fucked it's, up. It's a little bit funny, but I think at the same time, he's trying to be that opposite uh, character that he's usually typecast it as. Right. You know, so right. Full I'm House not, ruined I'll him. Fuck it, I'll yeah. fuck this. I'll fuck that. I'm he not, talked not, about not. how dirty his dad was. Oh. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and you hear about, the thing is, is if you pay, if you do a lot of research about comics, their parents were always into stand-up. Right. And some of their parents might have been really dirty, dirty people. Like, their humor's way darker and dirtier than most people's. Right. Which, you know, I can relate, I guess, you know, uh, my dad has a sick, twisted sense of humor, but that's probably where I get it, is I can laugh a little more, like the, when the episode when we watched the midget be thrown from the bus. Yeah, I remember. Okay, you know, we uh, we made a few jokes that might have been offensive to some, but I thought it was funny just because, you know, the situation. Again, you're not making fun of, like, pedophilia or rape. You're just seeing the, uh, I guess, the sunny disposition. Yeah, well, yeah. We're not making light of pedophilia. Right. Would, anything I laugh at, and this is what I tried to explain, because Kylie loved the documentary, took it very seriously. She said, this is a great thing. Corey Feldman basically um, fixed the statue of limitations in New York and California, and that's why Epstein and R. Kelly were indicted and convicted and put away, because the statue of limitations, more people were able to come out and tell their story and victim you know it's it's a good thing for victims and we've known that hollywood's a weird place i think most people know that holly weird is fucking you know the place of the casting couch but you never really you don't want to think of it as like a pedophile playground but that's kind of what it is is these people that get to work with kids daily are just these sick individuals who bypass the system because they're not forced to sign up for any type of you know uh it's a very laxed environment for a pedophile and it's kind of scary that is kind of scary one of the uh people in the documentary he talks about is dominic's i I forget his last name but it's the it is the fat guy from friday the 13th part five that eats the chocolate bar and the guy hacks him up with a with an axe because he's asking everybody you want a chocolate bar you want a chocolate bar he's a convicted like I don't know. Well, I don't, you know what? I'm not going to spread informa- misinformation. It's been a minute since I've watched it. Right. But I, I, he came. His name came up, and he was one of the names that raped Corey Haim. Uh, Charlie Sheen was the main name that. But but see, this has been speculated did, did, for did years. Did Corey Haim now. just spend his life just 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 get raped? Just over okay. Over. But that's that's. I'm I'm a big fan of the Bonfire with Big J Okerson, Dan Soder mm-hmm. on Sirius XM on Comedy Central Radio. I, uh, they ha- they dedicate a lot of their episodes towards Corey Feldman because he's so ridiculous and egotistical. And oh, he, yeah. if you pay attention, if you do research with Corey Feldman, he railroads Corey Haim his whole life. Ever since Corey Haim died, he's just like, yeah, he gets butt fucked all the time, and he likes it, you know. And he it, it he oh. spreads information that's unnecessary to spread when the guy's dead. Right. Everybody's like, you know, what makes you the doorman of his butthole? Like, yeah, it's so weird of a situation. If you knew about all this, why didn't you try Do to help anything? Him? Yeah, and, the, know, like, that's in the the two Corys when they did the the scripted reality show, and the the very last episode was them at a, a cafe or whatever a restaurant, and they're talking, yeah. and they explode on each other like I was getting raped, you know, and you knew about it, didn't do anything. And Corey Feldman's like, well, I was too by the same guy, and you didn't say shit, you know, so they kind of blame each other. It's it's a dark, dark thing. Holy shit. And, you know, if you look into Charlie Sheen, Charlie Sheen's got a really rocky history that he can't... It's hard for him to defend more so than if he would have just stayed a professional. You know, if he would have stayed in Two and a Half Men, if he would have wrote right. off that success, done a few more movies, if he would have done all that and not had the whole winning yeah. phase. Tiger's blood. That is the best. That is the best Charlie Sheen. If he's not a pedophile, that's the best version of Charlie Sheen is drug yeah. now. I hate to be that guy. He's way <laughs> better fucked up. Yeah. The shit that spews out of his mouth is so... He even said that in the interview. He said it's more entertaining. It's it's not your boring jibber-jabber. It's just I'm saying like I'm an F8... Um, you know, I'm like an F18 
and I'm coming over your house and I'm bombing, I'm bombing the fuck out of your family and I'm coming for you with a tiger and a fucking chimpanzee and I'm drinking tiger's blood. I'm fucking, I fuck the chimpanzee and then I bang seven gram rocks <laughs> and then I fuck a prostitute with a rubber because I fuck the chimpanzee <laughs> and that's how I get down. He just, he, he exploded at the mouth with, with crazy wow. shit. What do you think about Charlie Sheen? I, I mean, I, he makes me laugh. Um, that's the problem. I enjoy a lot of his uh, movies and videos. I love Two and a Half Men, but at the same time, you know, I, I you know, don't advocate. Nobody wants craziness, to admit. Nobody wants to admit that he's this creep because he is a funny guy. He has done movies in the past that are great. He's he's done even when he was you know winning. You know mm-hmm. when he was all this Tiger Blood and shit. You know, you still kind of had an affinity for the guy. You were like, okay, right. well, you know, you're just spinning out of control, but it's because you have so much money, you don't know what to do with it right. other than party, you know. But True. He, if if he is a, if he's done this to Corey Haim, he probably, he obviously has a dark history. Right. So what I if mean, him spiraling out of control is him like, you know, wanting to, not worrying about killing himself because he knows he's a piece of shit. So like, I mean, are there any, um, you know, in lieu of all of this, um, are there any lawsuits against uh, Charlie Sheen? Um, not like Charlie Sheen. Not, not Charlie Sheen at the moment. But well, why didn't they? I'm surprised. Harvey Weinstein is ass. You know what I mean? You like, got to watch the documentary. Well, documentary. He goes to the he goes to the SAG uh, Screen Actors Guild mm-hmm. committee, and he has to have Dominic, the guy from, uh, or not? It's not Dominic. You know what upset me the most about this documentary is. One of my favorite horror movies of all time is Return of the Living Dead. Mm-hmm. That's one of the best zombie movies you'll ever see. It it was the reason that zombies nowadays are like, you know, brains. They right. eat brains. That was never established until Return of the Living Dead in 1985. That movie's masterpiece. Okay, it's just a wonderful movie. I can mm-hmm. watch it over and over again. One of the characters that's in it is a convicted pedophile, Brian Peck. I did not know that. Oh, wow. And he's in Nickelodeon stuff. He's been in all that, the Amanda show, <clears throat> and he's convicted, but he still works on set and stuff. So Corey Feldman went to the Screen Actors Guild to have his actor's card taken away. Like, he doesn't want him. He's like, this guy's not safe to work with people. He needs to stop working. And they said, you can't, we can't do anything based off hearsay. We have to have victims. So many victims come forward, and then we look into it. Right. Until then, we can't do anything. You would have to have so many victims come forward and claim it, and then they would investigate it, and then they could, you know. Mm-hmm. They could do something about it, which is odd because California does have, I, I get some guy walking in there going, this guy's a pedophile, kill him. You know what I mean? Like yeah. kill, kill his career. That's kind of, you can't do that. But this guy's convicted. If this guy's convicted, convicted I think that's reason enough. You don't need more victims. You have, you have one or two already that have come out. Mm-hmm. That's what doesn't make sense about it. But Brian Peck, I, he's not the best actor from that movie either. So it doesn't matter to me. Right. I still love that movie dearly. But uh, it was upsetting to know that, you know, it's all over the place. It's not just big A-list movies. It's these B movies. It's these mm-hmm. shitty, you know, straight to DVD movies. It's everybody in the system making film. That's right. just, you know, not everybody. You know, that's a bit of a reach. But there's a lot of sick people in Hollywood. It's pretty crazy. You know, yeah, it's been a whole huge thing past couple of years. The, the, you know. The only reason I believe that Charlie Sheen's probably uh, capable of that is the interview that Denise Richards gave when she said that she found things on his computer she wasn't comfortable with and she didn't feel like her kids were safe around him. Mm-hmm. So she divorced him and took the took the kids with her. But she still stood up for him and shit. So it's kind of right. odd. Like, I'm thinking maybe he was... Because she, what she explained was it was pornography where it was young men that looked young, young, that looked too young. He's like, the websites he was visiting were young, young. Like, he was looking oh. at young, young porn. Oh, my God. And oh, I just got the wheel. young, young porn sounds yeah. like some kind of rice dish at yeah. fucking... <laughs> Cream up some young guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> young, 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 oh young porn. God. Um, and that's why she left. Well, and then, I guess I could understand. I could understand that, you know? Yeah. Well, the kid but, the kid from Two and a Half Men doesn't... He, he came out and said, don't watch that show. You know, it's it, that show sucks. When he got well, older, it's because he's part of some sort of really huge uh, religious group now. Scientology. So, I don't. I'm not Something sure. Something like that. I'm not sure. Something like that. Hollywood some, against Manson. Some some huge religious thing um, that he's high up in. Ever since Charles Manson, these goddamn actors have gotten uppity. 
Oh, yeah. You know, security and all that. <laughs> it's like somebody got murdered, you know. We dig through the garbage to make mama leave. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Manson's <laughs> always a favorite on this show. Not necessarily what happened, but the man yeah. was a goddamn, he was gold. One minute he would be telling some philosophical ph- philosophy about, you know, a Gandhi and all this and the mm-hmm. shit that makes sense about the trees, save the planet and all this. And you're like, I'm, I'm kind of with Manson. Yeah. And then he'll go, you want to watch me do Tabo? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he does karate moves for no fucking reason. Yeah. And, you know, and starts doing chants. It's he he did. He's done way too much acid. I oh, think. yeah. He or was, did way too much acid. He he's gone now. Crazy. He... R.I.P. Charlie. R.I.P. Charlie. Charlie, don't serve. He's a box. A hobo. <laughs> I love Charles a Manson's an easy target. Wine. That's like that's like low hanging fruit. Oh yeah, with with the spectacle of making fun of somebody. Fucking low hanging fruit would be. Speaking of low hanging fruit. <laughs> speaking of low hanging fruit. We wanted to talk to everybody about this this documentary, The Tiger King, it's, on Netflix. It's on there right now. Uh, give it a watch. Um, listen. <laughs> I don't just watch random f- documentaries just to watch them because I'm bored. Um, this one is definitely one that if you're going to be indoors for about a week or two because of all this stuff that's going down, the this, COVID. This, will, this will make you laugh. Yeah, this will this will this tickle will, your this funny will, bone. Yeah, brighten your inside day. It uh, it it. <laughs> listen, this documentary is a is a true crime drama. It's not meant to be funny. It's supposed to be dead serious. Um. If you're listening, I urge you to just Google the image of Joe Exotic, and then you'll understand just by the picture of this man what we are talking about. There are three tiger sanctuaries, okay? One is in Carolina, and that man is a white-haired, long-haired. Um, he, he gets a lot of young women to come live at his compound and raise these tigers and be showgirls, and mm-hmm. he marries them. He's got like four or five wives. Ooh. Okay, so he's running like a sex cult. The other one is Joe Exotic, which is in Oklahoma, which is not too far from home. Mm-hmm. He's in Oklahoma, and he's a homosexual, and uh, that's that that's only prominent because he's very. Uh, I I don't want to sound rude, but he's very flamey. He is. He's very uh, eccentric. He looks like uh, you can tell Alan he's Jackson gay, but, mm. with facial piercings and eyeliner. Remember Joe. Remember Joe. He, he wears skinny he, jeans. He, and he plays with these tigers. <laughs> he. He wears these he crazy jeans. He, he wears skinny jeans. He's he's bizarre. He yeah. has he has two or three boyfriends, so that's a theme oh, in yeah. tiger situations is multiple partners. And they I all guess. and they all carry guns and not mm. not even if you put the three of them together, they don't have enough teeth as a regular human should have. Um, it's kind of sad. It's sad to an extent, but if you can see the humor in it, you'll get it. Like yeah. the other, the third one is Carol. Um, Baskins, Carol Baskins, and she owns a tiger sanctuary called the Big Cat Rescue in Miami, Florida, and she's like mortal enemies with Exotic Joe. Oh yeah, Ex- Exotic Joe gets online and makes videos. Now he's he's in he's in prison now. Just just a uh, spoiler alert. Yeah, he, he is, is in prison, prison. Yeah. and we're gonna get there. We're gonna start with the first episode we watch. We're gonna explain the characters, but these people are all crazy. They all oh, have yeah. a crazy backstory. Oh, they're fucking <clears throat> nuts. The guy with the long white hair has a, has a sex cult. He makes comments uh, that would suggest that he is more than just uh, emotionally in love with the tigers, that he's physically loves the tigers, yeah. and they love him back. He doesn't understand why people have problems. Why with, do people with have problems with me sleeping with these with tigers? Yeah. Now, he doesn't upright say this, but it's suggested almost. It's, it's You kind of have to watch out for that. In he the first has episode. relationships. He, and they have them with back with him. Cats. Yeah, and it they is, have it, them back. People, it's reciprocated. It's consensual. It is consensual. In his eyes, it's the consensual. Kid. If he pees on you, it means he likes you. <laughs> Carol Baskins... Uh, is this kind of hippie lady who is trying to shut them down because they breed tigers. They breed cubs, and they let people take pictures with them and hold them. But she kind of does the same thing. She runs kind of a theme park, too, like a zoo. They call it a private zoo. But it, if we know anything about private, private's not always the best. Right. Private prisons have fucked us. So private zoos are probably fucking animals. you got to think about it like that. Like, it's one person owning this big zoo. Right. You know, and... The thing is, these tigers are beautiful. The lions are beautiful. These exotic mm-hmm. animals are awesome. 
but they kind of the first episode goes over why this is really a fucked thing. up and wrong which you know is legit that's really fucked up and wrong you shouldn't um breed tigers just to make ten thousand dollars off of them while they're cubs and then you know and then after they're cubs what they You're say like six them. months at six months you can no longer you know it's not safe to bring around people mm-hmm. you can't have pictures taken with anymore people can't pet it babies can't that's pet the it. that's the idea that carol's trying to get across but to that everybody is that you can't you, you're not supposed to breed them she doesn't breed them she buys them yeah and the thing is she's kind of a hypocrite to a certain extent now here we've already told you the the, the sex cult guy with the white hair mm-hmm. joe exotic she is a character of her own. She has some dark history. She's the most, uh, I guess she's the most sane out of them, but she has been accused in the past of, of murdering her, her husband, husband and feeding him to the tigers because he's went missing. All right. He was a millionaire. She's like, oh no, he went to Costa Rica. <laughs> he went, she says he went to Costa Rica, he disappeared, he ran away. And everybody says, no, she murdered him to get the money. The inheritance uh, said upon, upon, um, Injury uh, upon something. It was other than it didn't have death on it. Right. It had disappearance. She get, it's basically said she gets the money if he goes missing or if he if it's like you know this big injury he can't function and he has to give his money control right. to somebody else. It's her. But so the the detective said that it's not it's not often that it says go in case this person goes missing this person gets the money. They said that was kind of fishy. Mm-hmm. And that's what kind of leads them to, you know, Joe, Joe Exotic, this gay Alan Jackson looking guy, oh, okay, man. is a is a treat if you are wanting to laugh. And you're not, not uh, you're not laughing at the fact that he's gay. That does not. No. It's not a big deal at all. The, actually, no. the gay's the least big deal with this man. Yep. This man is psychotic with firearms. Oh, yeah. He loves firearms. I, there's the, there's this part, dude, uh, where, the, you know, the camera's on him and it's here's the skinny jeans. <laughs> and his and his Wild West gun holster, and he's and he's got a he's got a legit revolver, he's loaded, got a revolver locked, ready to go at all times. And, and the cameraman's like, "Why do you carry that gun?" He goes, "People." And and the, and the interviewer says, "Not the not the cats." And he says, "No, I'd shoot you before I'd shoot my cats." Yep, just like that. And he, he looks through <laughs> the chain link fence when he says it. I'd shoot you. I'd, I'd shoot you before I'd shoot my cat. There is a, the the movie opens up. The documentary opens up, and he says, "It go it it it's an interview." And he says, um, "I go into these cages every day with my life in my hands. I'm I'm, I'm willing ready to, to die, die for these animals." And it cuts straight to him in a cage with a big ass tiger dragging him by his leg, and he's smacking it with a stick with his cane that he's walking around with it's priceless i love it dude he's getting <laughs> carried away though. i'm ready to die for these tigers wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you <laughs> son of a bitch the the combat of the authorities part of it is they show this incident where oh. this man was raising 50 exotic wild animals there was uh, i think a baboon uh, a bear and some lions and tigers, like 18 tigers, a baboon, and a bear. And he let go of all these exotic animals into the town, and the police had Zanesville. to... Zanesville. Re- Zanesville? Mm-hmm. Zane, where is that at? I, I missed where that was. All the officer said was, this is the this is just the craziest thing that happened in Zanesville. It was 50 exotic animals that this man released on, upon everybody, and the police had... Tra- could, they couldn't... They didn't have the resources to gather them up and take them somewhere. So they shot them. So they shot all of them. They shot, like, 50 of these exotic animals. It was sad as fuck. Oh, dude, they had them laid out. Like, and that was why they, they were explaining... That 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 was their reason was this is this is why this is a bad thing because these people aren't necessarily the best they don't need to have them as pets and that's Carol Baskin's point right is she's trying to fight and say uh, she wants to be the last exotic zoo private zoo right that there is she's wanting to shut down the cult guy and the gay firearm guy mm-hmm. and that's and and if you watch the the cult guy and Joe Exotic. You understand why they probably need to be shut down, right? Because they are very wild. They're very wild people. They're you know, you can watch Duck Dynasty and laugh and go, "Wow, these people are you know kind right. of different." These people don't. I don't think they need to be on the street. Yeah, quite frankly, I think they're monsters. I think they're gay monsters. <laughs> <laughs> they're. I mean, they are. They they are definitely now, a now, menace to society. Quality. Joe Exotic catches you off guard. Yeah. Because you think, oh, here's this fun loving gay man who loves tigers. Perfect. Not only does he own a t- private tiger farm, 
this man is a country music singer. He is a musician. Oh, yeah. He is. And it will break away from a serious moment where he's like, I just love these tigers. And he'll have a tear in his and eye. I saw a tiger. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, saw, man. he's in this black outfit. <laughs> like standing Brooks and Dunn. A, yeah, standing on a hood of a Chevy with a lightning strike. <laughs> with a lightning strike in the background. And he's got these tiger. shades on. And he's got a guitar. And in he's my just, soul. He's going at a song. And it's a music video he made. Yeah. That's <laughs> what makes Joe <laughs> exotic. It's something like Drab Stand Garth out. Brooks. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Remembering the Tiger. <laughs> fucking country music montage. I, I love. That was my favorite part about this whole thing is that oh. he's like, it was almost like he's sitting there in the interview and he's like, y'all know I got music, right? Right. Y'all want to see my video? I am a country western singer. <laughs> He says at one point <laughs> he's going at this Carol uh, Carol Baskin so hardcore he's shooting dummies on video on the internet and right. saying that this is Carol and we're just gonna fuck her up as soon as she comes up with Peta and whoever else she comes with the, this is what you're gonna be greeted with and it's it and shows his shoot, husband no. shooting a shotgun in the in the in the pond uh, and then they then they put TNT uh, in they the, put some explosives in the, in the uh, in dick a doll, region yeah. of of a of a of a mannequin doll. And then uh, it takes him three shots. He, he, to even get, <laughs> he had to, he had to get up on that. Where's the scope? The problem. I need the scope. The problem is if you watch it, he's he's at a, at a good distance shooting. He fires twice. Bam misses. Bam misses. And then the shot goes. He you can tell under his breath he goes. God damn it! And he gets up and he gets even closer <laughs> with a scope. And then he shoots it and it, it and he he's got like it. right next to it. Yeah. Ten there, feet, fine. <laughs> the, the there's uh, there's like cut scenes. There's like uh, super cut scenes of him. It's like a montage of him shooting weapons, and he's by a like a bonfire, and he shoots it into the fire, and he, he <laughs> shoots like something that's explosive, because he shoots it and he it explodes and it almost throws him off his balance, and he goes, oh fuck yeah, like, oh fuck yeah, <laughs> he like almost blows him up, and he's like, oh fuck. Yes. He's got one leg swinging in the air. <laughs> he almost <laughs> fell on his ass. <laughs> fuck yeah! Oh fuck yeah! He's 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 a wily little gay guy. Oh and yeah, he loves life. He's <laughs> very he's very into life. He's just very into tigers and his boyfriends. There is, and I've watched further into it, and I'll go even a little further because this man's story cannot be told in one podcast. Okay, so we're gonna try to watch every episode and, and give updates on Joe Exotic. Mm -hmm. The first episode basically is what we said. It explains why tiger breeding is bad in this country, why right. we should have regulations. Mm -hmm. It's very recent. Uh, 2019 is the year that he ended up in prison. 2019. And spoiler alert, he ended up in prison because he put he tried to put a hit out on Carol Baskins. Yeah, which uh, obviously was not successful. <laughs> which we'll Listen, get into. The he, we'll get into it, but here's the deal. I have to say this. He, he tries to pay this hit man. Ten thousand dollars total to 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 bang this lady out on her bike ride in and the morning. Everyone knows that you pay the hitman after. Well, not only that, the hitman's going to cost more than ten thousand dollars. Well, he, I mean, the going rate to knock somebody a hundred thousand dollars is ten thousand dollars. He said five up front, five when the job's done. It's like ten to like forty. Most time they ask for fifty. You can get it done. For Joe 20. Exotic. You can get it done for twenty. If you watch this documentary and you just get through the first episode, I'm telling you, you will think the same thing I thought. This could be a Danny McBride, Will Ferrell, Adam McKay yeah. movie with Danny McBride being Joe Exotic. Oh, it's going to be. It's so, it's I, so bizarre. I so hope that it is. I, I wouldn't recommend it if it wasn't so great. It's so, so entertaining, and these people are trying so hard to be serious, but it, you can't you can't write these characters better. You really can't. Oh, man. It's three camps of tiger. I sleep with an AK-47 under my bed, locked, and ready to go. <laughs> I mean, who like you can't make that shit up, dude. Mm -mm. Like, I love this is Bubbles. We were kids together. Joe Exotic basically, in order to feed the tigers, he'll feed them cows. Mm -hmm. He'll chop up cows, buy the cows from the farmers, and he'll chop up the cows and feed them to the tigers. Yeah. Right, just like whole like legs. Eventually, oh yeah, parts, it's big parts, big parts. And they throw them in there, and the tigers fight over them. And you watch the tigers fight, and you're like, "Fuck!" You know, I get, I get that this is, you know, it, I don't know because I don't know enough about tigers, but it seems inhumane. It seems really fucked up. Like they would be better off hunting their own food and learning how to survive out there. Rather than you caging them in a parameter, right? And but then just after, throw it after so many years in fucking captivity, man, 
there's a point where it doesn't matter. An animal, um, you know, can't um, evolve and develop with his surroundings. He's lived in a cage for right. so many years. Pretty much, you know, kitty cat institutional institutionalization. Joe Joe Exotic, blah, blah, blah. Joe Exotic, gets food trucks. He goes to local supermarkets and whatever they don't they don't use as far as meats, hot dogs, bologna, steak, chicken, all these meats. He loads up in a truck, and they're expired meats. He throws them in a big dumpster and he lets his employees, who are mostly like ex cons and ex drug addicts and shit, and he he lets them take a handful of the meats. So they can eat because they only get paid like $130 a week to work at this. You know, Carol Baskins doesn't even pay her employees at all. She makes a comment where uh, well, that's, they, they do it for free. Well, that's how she's outlasting Milton because she, she, it's, she, it's totally free. It's a non it's a not-for-profit organization. So she, she runs on. Um, if you watch it, she's the, she's the most likely candidate to where you're like, okay, man, yeah. as long as she didn't murder her husband, that's the only thing she's got to get. And she's, she's, kind of she's running on donations and shit like that. Like she's not actively making money with it. She is getting notoriety and fame, right. but, um, she, you know, legit, you know, g- you know, goes and through donations, buys these tigers and then puts them in her cage where the, no one's making money off of them, but they're still sitting in a cage and dying, <laughs> you know? Um, at one point, she's making a promo commercial for the news or whatever it is, and she's inside of a cage while well, there's a tiger in the background inside of a bigger cage. And she says, these animals don't deserve to be in cages. <laughs> and, and you're double caged you're, in. You're double caged. It's like you, you see the tigers in the background pacing the cage. And you're like, why this would... This white bitch comes out there for one second. Just because the cage is bigger doesn't make it not a cage. You got to let them go. It's true. They're not supposed to be here. <laughs> We're not supposed to have tigers walking the streets of Florida, right. you know. And there's already a problem in Florida with animals and shit. Every time you see an episode of Hoarders, it's an old lady full of piss and shit in her floors because there's cats running rampant, uh-huh. or there's, she's a bird lady who, with too many birds, she can't there's take care of. There's at least seventy-five dead cats. And in then this we wonder, then we wonder where these diseases are coming from. You Mumps know, and measles. The ice, diseases. the ice is melting, so all those diseases from millions of years ago were finally fucking coming up in the air, and it's that's going to get scary. Yeah. You know, this is only the beginning of spread of oh, disease. Only wait. the beginning. I can't wait. I can't it's, wait. It's a plague. We could use a nice cleanse. That's what's happening. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I don't. We're, we're, I don't want any cleanse. I, I was gonna say Joe Exotic just don't kill dark us. on us here. Well, I mean, he cleansed himself out. He he is a funny guy because he's so redneck. He's so for firearms. He's so like country boy, but he's gay. He's very gay. He's 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 tiger gay. Yes, he is. He has two or three boyfriends. One of them, their name is Travis. I'm not proud of that. I'm not proud that my name was brought into it. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure, it's not me. Uh, no Wait matter how many people want to speculate Bullshit. the Let rumors. Let me see your teeth. Let me see your teeth. No, that's not even Travis. That's that's some other guy. That's the that's the uh, Batista all knockoff. Of his, all of his boyfriends and husbands have missing teeth. Let me see your fucking teeth. This kid was actually a younger, attractive guy. Did he have all his teeth? Yeah. Oh, he had okay. all of his teeth. His name was Travis. There's, so that's not in the first episode. Then. I can't. I can't. See, this is the problem with watching one episode and then trying to explain it because there's so much we missed just because we didn't watch more. I know. Uh, but we'll talk about more. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll get we'll into talk about it. it. We'll get it. Um, the first episode just basically explains everything that you need to know, and it sets it up real nice. And that's when Gives you kind of... base By playground. the second or third episode, you realize, okay, I'm going to be into this for the long haul, and I'm going to finish it. The first episode, maybe not so much. Once you get into that second episode, you start going to the third. It doesn't start slow. It doesn't start slow at all. It, it jumps right it is, into the it bullshit. Is packed to the gills. There's a music video compilation you can look up of this guy. Dudes in knee braces, bopping tigers on the head. Mm. Like it gets right into it. Right into it. No. He says he he hops a little fence and he says, "Let's go get some promo shots." <laughs> <laughs> And the camera Let's guy get some promo. The camera guy starts to follow him, and he says, "No, go around, go around go to the around front, to the side of the cage, get a better shot." And he goes around and does this fake, like, "How you doing?" And he smiles to the camera, you know, like trying to get these shots for his music video. And he's next to a tiger singing his little song. I wish we we should uh, we should try to find one of those songs. I saw a tiger. I think in a tiger saw man. Just to give you guys Lightning an strike. idea, Lightning strike of. 
of what this guy's about. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what this guy's about. Joe Exotic's the man. He if, is the man. He didn't really even he didn't even really execute. He's doing like 22 years in prison. Yeah, he is. But he tried to pay to knock somebody off, man. Like, that's a crime, you know? Joe Exotic music videos. If you look them up on YouTube, it looks like they're here. This one's called... I saw, I saw a tiger. tiger. This is the one This is the one Lau's talking about. I saw a tiger. <laughs> I love okay. that one, so... Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, if you do get peed on in the gift shop, there are shirts that say, I got peed on by tigers. He does say that. That's in, quote for quote. Enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tell all the hunters to lay down their guns. <laughs> Tell them that the tiger needs a little bit of love. This is, little this little is real. Love. This is real. In case you thought we were bullshitting. This is 100% real. Then stand back and marvel. Marvel. He's standing on a truck. Yeah. A wildlife reserve truck. Lights going and everything. Oh, my God. We, we, I saw tigers. I, ca- I cannot express. It's still going. Tiger it's saw. still going. You can't, you can't stop the tiger. You, you can't you stop. Can't. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> Turn it on. <laughs> Whew, it's got girls gone wild in here. Get her a shirt. The tiger saw man as well. Apparently, <laughs> this guy's a gold mine. If you're look, if you're bored, this is called Here Kitty Kitty. I, I feel like I need an adult present. It's he's got an actress that looks like Carol Baskins. Oh, yeah. feeding tigers, <laughs> and he like kills her in the music video, like. Oh my god. Oh, of course. She looks just like her, too. Really? Oh, yeah. This is a song about killing her. This is oh. why he's in prison. <laughs> Oh, shots he, fired. He went to Costa Rica. I wish we had a gun sound. <laughs> He's going off the edge, people. Here. He, he wouldn't, if he would try harder, he wouldn't be a bad musician. He wouldn't be half bad. He, he had a good future of the country if he just leave them cats alone. This, that video, that music kitty, video. Kitty, kitty. That music video is about Carol Baskins, and it's a video of a look-alike Carol Baskins right. that's walking around feeding pieces of her husband to the tigers. Oh. And that's what the song's about, is he's like, he, she murdered her husband. And <laughs> this piece has a loafer on. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. <clears throat> but I think that it's a hand. I saw a tiger. And tigers, oh man! So you even remember the lyrics? That's <laughs> that's the thing. Is the shit's catchy? It's it's gonna be on your top playlist now. You're gonna be bumping that on the way to wherever you're going. If you're going anywhere, fuck, I, dude. If we ever do a music video, <coughs> we need a white like ranger truck to stand on uh-huh. with. With uh, you know what? And I've, and we'll just stand there and embrace each other. I saw a tiger. <laughs> I don't think. We're, not to that song. I don't want to embrace anybody right now with that song playing. Well, I mean, okay, we'll do the we'll do the COVID that, stand beside you, don't touch me, embrace. Like I said, it's not that he's embrace gay. The COVID. It's not the gay that makes him funny. It's it's the music videos and him taking himself so seriously with this bleach blonde mullet. And this yeah, like just pencil it's, stash. It's, it's, it's just how kind of gun crazy he looks like and, he crawled right out of a fucking monster truck. Oh, he yeah, he totally did. I've been driving this monster truck for twenty three years. Grave digger. <laughs> you think you think any sort of ASPCA person or anything can come up in here, <laughs> right? We're gonna show you what they're gonna get. That's what it is. <laughs> That's why he's so dangerous. I know. <laughs> he's on the camera like we're gonna kill him. We're gonna kill the families. They got babies. We're gonna exterminate them. Exterminate. It's gonna be like a little Waco. I would. That, that's, uh, that's, there is. That's a, what he said. I skipped over that. 
there is a point in the interview where they they talk about uh, the PETA and uh-huh. the federal, the you know the federales, I guess, and all this. Right. The federales, like we're in Mexico. Yeah, the federales. The federales. The feds. feds it's Ganadar. He basically says, if the feds or PETA try to come and take these tigers from me, I'm gonna kill them. Right. They're, it's gonna be a small way go. He's like, no one's gonna He's be coming dead in serious. Here taking. He says it, it, it will be a small way go. Yeah, he did. He said that verbatim. It will be like a like a like a small Waco, like a small Waco, Texas. Like there is a point in one of the episodes where he they go undercover at her big cat rescue farm. Really, with a camera, and he tries to expose her for shit, you know. And he's like, "Well, right. we only saw thirty tigers. She claims to have hundreds of tigers. Where are these other tigers?" So he takes a helicopter above the farm. And he's taking shots, and he tells this one guy, I, th- I, I don't know if it's his husband or just a, a co-worker with him. He says, I'd love to have grenades right now just to drop on this bitch. Oh! oh, oh. <coughs> if this man's obviously done his research about Waco. <laughs> oh, yeah. He knows how it's going to yeah, go down. He's dropping like, grenades yeah. from Tiger helicopters, The bitches. thing about it is, I have a Liger with wings, and if you come at me, I've got Excalibur. That's right, and believe me if when I tell you I have bred that Liger for mystical properties. Mystical properties. Okay. It's a only flying Liger in America. That's right. Just the dust off of its wings. I have to keep will, it in Missouri. It'll knock you on your fucking ass. It, it goes cow right in the cow. fucking air. It says that. I'm pretty sure it's got a beak. Yeah, and it'll just hump the shit out of you. It likes you. I very, mean, very friendly. What is that? There's a point in one of the interviews where they're sitting next to tigers, and the tigers are on top of each other, and the guy's like, oh, are they are they mating? Oh, are these are these mating? And, and like, he says, no, these are both boys. <laughs> these, these are both boys. <laughs> we have pretty open relationships around here. <laughs> he starts laughing. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, just like, we, and, his, and his gun's wiggling in its little wild western holster. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. He he masturbates to like a rhinestone cowboy. While watching videos of tigers, I swear to God. Or, yeah, he probably jerks at the tigers. The guy with the white hair makes makes it seem like he sleeps with the fucking tiger. Oh yeah. Oh, he has I love tigers and tigers love me back, and if you don't like it, fuck you. That's right. That's right. They got claws, I got a gun. He rides Come elephants. At they, they have so many exotic yeah. animals, it's fucking ridiculous. He rides on an elephant um, who is named Bubbles, and <laughs> uh, has a picture of him and Bubbles, and you know, and uh, they're both adolescents. Uh, and he did, he had, he did know this elephant. For my a long time. wife, my wife and I were watching this documentary, and I was like, this could be a Danny McBride movie, right. and Danny McBride could be Joe Exotic. And then uh, she was like, well, who's the white haired guy? And I, as soon as I saw the younger picture of him with the mustache and the curly hair with his shirt off, mm-hmm. I said, Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. And she goes, I yeah. don't know. And then the other picture comes up of the close up and she says, oh my God, that's Ben, that's ben, ben Stiller. Stiller. Yeah. Dude. The, the movie idea of this would be epic. Oh, dude. It'd it would be, be phenomenal. Huge. It'd be huge. Because this, it, you almost think of like an eastbound and down. It's got that feeling. This guy is so arrogant. Yeah. And it could be all about like. You know, like how like the, the struggle between the three of the characters. Now you have mm-hmm. to figure out who's going to be the other two kind of characters in this whole weird tiger trifecta. Carol Baskins um, could be like Kristen Wiig. Or Kristen Wiig or, I don't know, too, too skinny. More like, I really like a... She is, she a, is a bigger... Uh, which called it uh, Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates would be perfect. Dude, I... Yeah. That, oh. I mean, just click... Or, or like a or Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy would be fine, yeah. Dude. That would be great. Once you watch this documentary, you're going to understand and yeah. go, "Wow, that's that's spot on." Yeah, that is spot on accurate. Oh, the the uh, third guy that sleeps, I sleep with an AK-47 under my bed. You <laughs> roll, uh, fucking. Uh, the uh, younger him has been Stiller. The older him would have to be somebody else because he gets a little chunkier. Right. Uh, fucking Clean Rob shaving. Reiner. Rob Reiner. Have you seen him nowadays? He's white haired yeah. as fuck. Like, yeah, dude, it'd be perfect. I, I I was thinking of that all last night. I was like, "This is so funny that it could be a movie like that." Yeah. It could Who's be a show the or a fat movie. guy on the sea, do bro? Uh, it, that's that's an easy one. That's oh. an easy one. Um, fat guy on uh, the sea, do. I I told my wife this. Um, Didn't you say it looked like Louis uh, Louis Anderson? Yeah, Louis oh! Anderson. Oh! <laughs> it's a sea, do. It's a sea, do. Louis Anderson. This guy looks that. like Louis Anderson riding a a, a jet ski. 
and oh, there really? is a shot where it, he's. I think he's, I hope this is episode two. He's that's hauling what I'm gonna, ass gonna on this jet tonight. ski towards the camera, and it's going. Dun, 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 dun. It's playing the song. Dun, dun, dun. I have the Tigers playing, and he's hauling ass with his with his hair. He's got hair flowing in the wind. There's a shot where he's coming towards the camera. He ta- he it's slow motion. He takes his sunglasses off, and you can tell for a second he's looking for the camera. So he's looking off into the distance, and he like kind of moves into the camera really slow motion, and he's just hauling ass, and his hair's blowing in the wind. After he spots it, blow- he <laughs> he had to look for the oh, camera. He's like, dude. oh, oh. <laughs> and they slow it down. They slowed it down. <laughs> it was it was incredible. Solid gold. Dude. It was a cr- incredible. <sighs> I, Way I, down yonder in the chat, hey, <laughs> That's what I wish they would have played. <laughs> As he's hauling ass Way up down yonder on the chat, hoochie. It gets hotter than a hoochie coochie. It's... That's that's who that's who Joe Exotic looks like is Alan Jackson. I know he's like a he's like a gay. If Alan Jackson I mean, were a very eccentric and Vegas. and and he knows this, mm-hmm. he's very he aware. knows it like that. I mean, there's a whole other dimension. Like he knows it. He you know, and he he'll, he'll show his CD right by you know, Alan Jackson's CD. Like he he knows it. <laughs> he puts he's he's got his yep. own poster up next to like I fucking. So, which one would you rather buy? Mm-hmm. Neil Diamond and fucking Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I'm pretty much like the Led Zeppelin of tiger loving. That's right. Stair- stairway to tigers. There's a lady who knows. Remember the tigers. <laughs> when they all came up and died. <laughs> In our farms. It's, I can't express how wonderful the documentary is. It's it's great. You got to check it out. Uh it's like number two or three trending on Netflix. So it's it's pretty easy to find. It's just called The Tiger King. And, you know, I think we've learned something today. Uh, gay cowboys, gay rednecks are the best kind of gay. And they also have an infinity for exotic animals. And I think it's beautiful. In a in a like a, a Charlie Ranson kind of you know, and kind of everyone's doing their own thing, you know, <laughs> kind of thing, you know, America. Um, the thing is, the white haired <laughs> guy. To America, you like kitty cat? <laughs> the, the, wow. the white haired guy that has the co- sex cult has lended his animals to movies like Mighty Joe Young. Oh yeah, Doctor Doolittle. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, George of the Jungle, like big movies. You know Disney movies and all these types of things, mm-hmm. and it's it's kind of cool. I mean, if if you can strip away their insecure, like their weird defaults, uh, like they're they've got they're they're very strange people, uh, and 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 they're doing like great things. Um, you know, they're, they're, sometimes they're, they're terrible yeah. things, but you know, not to quote Harry Potter, terrible, but great. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> terrible but great, but great. Mr. Potter. Okay. Uh, Did you hear that they're making a new Harry Potter? For real? Mm-hmm. Is it going to be? It's like his, about him ridiculous. and his kids. Like he's oh, yeah. a father now. Well, that that was the, uh, yeah, the, that, that book or play or whatever they had. Mm-hmm. What, what was that called? You know what pisses me off about that whole thing? You remember when we were talking about Johnny Depp being fired from mm-hmm. uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah. Amber Heard came out and said, no, I slapped the shit out of it. Like, I abused him. I always fucked him up. And it was leaked. And Johnny Depp still lost his movies. He hasn't been confirmed to go back to any movies. And yeah. she's still being part of Aquaman, too. Ah, so. But there's like a petition going around that's like so many people are like, no, she should lose her position. If that's what we're going to do to Depp, that's what we're going to do to her. It's only fair. Mm-hmm. You know? And I don't know. It's it's one of those things like uh, I knew when that video came out of him slamming the cabinets and he was drinking all that wine mm-hmm. and she was videotaping him. It was kind of like gaslighting. Like I yeah. could tell, I was like, you're just trying to get him riled up. So yeah, he smacks the camera out of your hand and it goes and hits the floor. And you say, you know, Oh, he hit me. And then you come out with a small black eye that somebody, your girlfriend punched you in the face once. Uh-huh. It's you know what I mean? Bitch. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> I, I, I can't stress enough that it's gotta be equal. If, if we find out that, okay, well, Johnny Depp wasn't abusing her. And she comes out and mm-hmm. says, no, it was the other way around, motherfucker. Like, she gets hard about it. Yeah. Like, yo, I beat the shit out of him. What are you going to do about it type deal? 
I think action should take. We can't yeah. be have a double standard. That's right. You know, uh, it's like the I always get into the argument of like uh, if a dude can get convicted of it, so can a girl. I feel like Harvey Weinstein's case. He's a monster. They have if proof that he's sick, so kind of and there's weird casting couch situations. Yeah, Louis C.K.'s case is a little different. That's Not a little different. by much, but a little different. Right. If he blocked the door and like you know made them watch him, sure, that's that's weird. But if it was like him laying in bed and asking, and they just said, "Yeah," they don't. They can't come out later and say, "Oh, yeah. he did this weird thing." No, you're a grown woman. Like, like did you, you did wa- this weird thing with him. Uh, you like, need to be. You speak- guys did it to get. You guys could got you, weird. Could you be? Could you leave or could you not leave? That's the main question. Right. Is like I'm not asking. Were you, what you there were by wearing. your own recognizance? Were you mm-hmm. being held against your will? You know, mm-hmm. like a bunch of people go to parties every year. And, the, you know, they also can leave when they want. And Cosby's a monster, too. But a lot of for help when they want. A lot of comedians have stuck up for Cosby in the light of like it was the they, well, when they when they played devil Spanish. Fly, the whole deal with him was there was more than enough people to say not only. Yes, he touched me. Oh, he touched me, too. The no, he too, was a he was a creep. He drugged them. I think uh, there was more than enough people. That with all the, set with together, the time period, this whole Spanish fly and shit. He yeah. would give them Spanish fly, and knock them out. Uh, you know they're still conscious though, but you know knock them out, make the you know terrible dubious love, and then you know it's you always the it's always the cleanest comic. Left them it's on. always like the cleanest squeaky clean guy that you got to look out for. People, it's horrible and having schmecks with them. Schmecks? He should have. He should have gone to. He should have got. He got him a bowl of checks, did, mix, and went did, to prison. Did he? Did he? Did uh, Bill Cosby get convicted and go to prison? Did you not see those videos when he would run out and he would do the hey 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 and suck my dick? He bitch. was like he was like bobbing and weaving uh-huh. the camera. Yeah, like, he was playing around with people. Put my pudding pop, pudding pudding pop. But uh, Pepperidge Farm. But like, did he though? Did he? Did he get convicted? I'm pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure he's in prison. Okay, well, good. Him and Jared Fogle are showing, sharing a show, sharing a hill. It's like we're just waiting for, you know, for a while they're just waiting for Harvey to come join them. Harvey's Harvey. I think Harvey has already got sentenced. No, he's got. He's a Rikers, bro. He's a Rikers. He. They took a pit stop to the hospital. Yeah, because on the way to Rikers, he he his chest hurt. Yeah, he probably had a heart attack. That fat motherfucker's eating steaks, and he's and, like, a, and now he's going to Rikers. Like he was on his way to Rikers. Dude. Yeah. Like, he, like he might end up being killed if he knows a lot of shit. Oh, I'm sure he's in Rikers by now. Uh-huh. But yeah, he. I bet he uh, is. Uh, That's why everybody thinks Epstein got killed is because he had a lot to say. Mm-hmm. He had a lot of names. Big names. And that's why Corey Feldman's shit is like a big, like, everybody kind of knew some of the names he had said, but they needed him to say it. They needed him to come out and say it was him. Right. Like, people speculated, and he kind of hinted, yeah, but he would never be 100% on it. With this documentary, he comes out and says, Charlie Sheen molested my friend, because he told me multiple times. He told me how it was done, you know. Yeah. And he brought up all these points about these other actors that are involved and producers and you know, he's like, it's a big deal. And he started the the hashtag kids too. It's like me too, but it's for kids, kids too. He said, we need to protect children's innocence because you know, there's a lot of, you hear a lot of stories. Like if you look up the Nickelodeon stuff, uh, with Dan Schneider, there's a whole lot of dark, dark shit there. I think there's a little bit of pizza gate involved. Uh, Pizza Gate's well, real. You know, like... Podesta looks <clears throat> just like fucking uh, Chester Bennington. Mm. And I I don't want to be a conspiracy guy right now, but it's odd as fuck that that's the rumor that that's his son. And that's and if you research Lincoln Park and what Lincoln Park was, mm-hmm. it blows your fucking mind. It's like, it's, it's like, you almost wonder, is that his dad, like, is that why he's, you know, he's, he, all of his lyrics were very, like, you know, uh, depressing, mm-hmm. very like, I'm done with this shit. This world's crazy. But then it, you know, in the last minute to, or minutes to midnight, Lincoln park switched it up and was all about protecting the environment and they wanted to do good music. But for a while, you know, you listen to like, uh, somewhere I belong crawl, mm-hmm. uh, all these old Lincoln park songs that are, you know, hybrid theory, like made them superstars and dude, like, R.I.P. Chester Bennington, by the way. That's yeah. R.I.P. Chester. That's sad. Um, nah, that sucks. I enjoyed his. I love Lincoln Park. 
well, that was you really know, hybrid sad. theory and it, all that shit. Dude, it was, was a lot like when Robin Williams, you know, it's it's mm-hmm. one of those things where you're just like, God damn, it yeah. didn't it didn't need to be. And then you look at Ozzy Osbourne and he's like fucking Sharon. It, Sharon. We were having this conversation at work the other day about how Sharon Osbourne has to be so good at sex because of her no, voice. No, like she makes that motherfucker, dude. You know what I mean? She like, has to be good at ever something. since the day, way, way, way fucking back in the days, like sometime in the goddamn like seventies or some shit. She he she fucking goes over to hit the the hotel room that he's been staying at for about a month now. Yeah, he said he was there. F- he said he was there fucking for a month or two. Almost overdose on drugs and shit. Went in there only eating pizza and shit like that. He'd never leave. He thought he wasn't gonna do music again. And then she went in there and she fucking pulled it out of his fucking asshole. And now she probably did put it in there too. However many years later now, dude, like what the fuck, dude? I'm just saying she's got to be like, a good cook or something she, like, to run up in there and be like, oh, she. She loves that motherfucker so hard. Yeah, she it, made that motherfucker. He's, he still cheats on her too. That's the fucked up thing. Like, well, he's Ozzy Osbourne. He's uh, <laughs> exuberantly rich, and a lot of women love him, and she knows that. But like, <laughs> you know, he's not ever gonna be. You know, he's not ever gonna like. You know what song that Ozzy just put out that I really like? About that. Uh, scary, about. scary little green men. Oh yeah, he just put scary little green men out, and it is wonderful. Is it? Is you it? think he's talking about leprechauns because he's got a top hat and he looks Puppet like a leprechaun, <laughs> but he's talking about aliens. Oh. But I made this joke that he's in the studio and he's got dementia. And he's like, "What's this song about again, Shad?" And she's like, "Oh, see, it's scary little green men." <laughs> and he's like, "Oh yeah, leprechaun." She's like, "No, it's aliens." <laughs> top of the morning. <laughs> he's he's. <laughs> He's singing like the rainbows and spaceships. He's like just going yeah. at it. It doesn't matter. It's alien alien leprechauns. Okay. That's what he's talking alien about. Alien leprechauns, folk. It's uh, a pretty good song though. It's pretty cool. Uh, Jason Momoa did the music video and played Ozzy oh. in the music video. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's cool. That's something new that actors aren't doing and that are. It was innovation, yeah. yeah. He's he's riding it out, dude. That's one guy you can't it's really like, hate on. It's like anybody will put my faith on anything, I'm going to give it to him. Jason Momoa is on I'm commercials. Going he's doing what most people fear to do, and he's mm-hmm. going all in. He's saying, yeah. if you want me, if you're knocking at the door, I'll answer. Like, if you need me for something, uh, it could be a commercial to sell tires, he would do it. Yeah. He would do it because he's using that heat from mm. Aquaman being successful and yeah. all these movies it's he's done the being same successful. thing that like a lot of like uh, athletes and shit do and whatnot I like playing with my flexo light ping pong paddle you know <laughs> like it's all Ricky, they, Ricky Bobby and they paid him like hundreds of thousands of dollars just to say that and so he buys, Ricky Bobby was a buys, parody of that they're that selling Big Red Bubba. Sprite Domino's uh, KFC making money it's it, we gotta love that money I love that fucking movie it's a good satire. Yeah. I don't know. I, th- I thought that, that that documentary was awesome. I suggest that anybody get into it. The next episode, we'll go ahead and talk about the second episode of it. Uh, I want to stay on that for a minute because I can't. I don't think you can get enough of Joe Exotic right now. Oh, hell no. But uh, <laughs> if you want to keep up with it and know what we're talking about, go watch it. And then you can you know chime in and we can figure oh, it yeah. out. You know, we'll lay it down and we can all enjoy it together and we can break it down. And if you like Joe Exotic, if you don't like Joe Exotic, hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Let us know. Love it. Live it. Get it done. Leave it if you have to. There you go. Don't dislike it. Just leave it. Be more constructive with your feedback. Yeah. Slam that fucking. You know what? Fuck it. Slam buttons. Slam the phone to the ground. Yeah. Get mad. Get mad. Get mad that we even are back. You know? It's like some Lex and Terry, Howard Stern (laughs) shit. Like, just be mad that we're back on the scene. I want to see some shit on fire and (sighs) some cars flipped over. I think riots might happen, but for the wrong reasons. But we can claim that it's for us. We can always claim that. Well, we're like, we told you this was coming. We'll be investigating. We have no idea why, but it is. There. CNL's plastered all over the schools with spray paint. We don't know oh, why. We it's don't an know epidemic. why. We don't know why. We're everywhere now, and you it's hate it. It's good. <laughs> you just call us COVID nineteen. COVID. Oh no, let's not associate with. <laughs> uh, let's let's take a moment for other people that have, that have lost their lives with COVID nineteen. We have nothing about that. Um, nothing. A pointless disease. Let's let's take a moment. A of moment silence. for the world yes. um, let's suffering take a, from the pandemic. Uh, it sucks. We um, make light of it. But it's only because we have to laugh about it. We're in it in order you know, to get through like, it. Yeah, 
Like we all was, have to. Uh, I think community is a really important thing right now. We're we're right. realizing, you know, who's your, we're seeing who's your friend and who's not your friend. Right. When we come out of this, this is going to be a weird. Like you're going to look at people differently and go, "You stole a bunch of toilet paper when I was." You know That's what I mean? Right. It's like how the Shit's fuck you get, get up weird. out of the ashes, bitch. We know that like, when shit hits the fan, who's your friend and who's not now? Yeah. And that's the good thing. We're going to come out of this a lot stronger, I feel like. Hopefully. Look I mean, at America always... after 9 11. Uh, post 9 11, you know, give it, a, give it till right. about 2011. This is more of a direct we effect fine. on people than it was. Yeah, that's looking true. It was upon a it, disaster. 9 11 was small. It was small scale compared well, to this. I mean, pretty big, huge scale, uh, but I mean, huge thing to happen, but all the conspiracies and stuff with it, but like, you know, all that was. Um, not in it was impacting people, but not in a way like today, um, like where everyone's every, everything's impacted. Um, don't even bother going online and looking up store hours. They're going to be incorrect. You never know. They're um, constantly changing. It's constantly changing. There's shit going on. You can't even eat inside. And uh, let me let most me, of anywhere now. Let me um, say this, okay? It's all delivery carry out right now. I understand the conspiracy theorists. I understand the people that don't trust their government. Right now is the one time we need to band together and obey what we're being told because it makes sense. We need to social distance for a minute. We yes. need to clean up a little bit. Yes. There's uh, the Wuhan wet markets in China they need to clean up. We yep. need to, as a world, that is like be a little more like sanitary. Most importantly, yes, wash your hands for 20 seconds. Sing happy birthday twice. That's what I do. There was a video like, online like, with a girl with no bra that was washing her hands, and that's how they showed people, you know. Yeah how long you wash your hands. <laughs> I, I've always washed my... I don't understand why people don't fucking do that. It's something after hands. I use the bathroom do and wash not. my hands, I wash my hands yeah. when I don't need to. And d- it's yeah. just something... I, it's a habit. Big one, don't touch your face. See, this so is... Wash a, your this hands, is, don't touch your face. This is where... Social distance. That's like the three main... The touching your face thing, I don't think. I don't think, because I, I believe I was because watching. Because if it's uh, like if, if somebody like right now, um, they are saying, and, and it's not a, it's not a, um, hanging in the air virus now anymore. Um, it is a kind of drop contact, a water drop contact. Uh, somebody's talking to you that that is carrying it, spit comes out of their mouth, lands on your, uh, hands and whatnot. You're, it's on your hands, and, go, and then you don't even know. If Touching your eyes, your face, your mouth, and whatnot, like you know, right? That's why they say like wa- wash your hands twenty seconds at a time, back and front. I think do not touch your face, your your you know or your orifices. I um, think the, it's the perfect time for us to clean up, give a break. Get, get, it's a break for humanity. Right? Humanity needs to sit back it's for like, a minute and be self reflectant. Uh, yeah. And this is the perfect time for you to go home, sit down, and be self reflectant. Think about what we're doing wrong. Be the change you want to yeah. see. It's the perfect time for a revolution, but it is also the perfect time, and this is why I understand where the conspiracies are right. coming from, where the government right now can get really scary and overreach on it our can. rights. It really can. We have um, to be careful and cooperate so that doesn't happen, because the thing right. is, if we do not cooperate when they say go inside, right. they will force us inside, and then people will get shot by the police, by yeah. the by the reserve, Dude, whoever's like, there. This is real shit going on. We have, uh, we're... This close, we, we are the closest that we have been since like World War II uh, and shit like that. Where like we were an actual nation at war, martial law, mm. um, you know, uh, type of deal, martial law of like any kind. We're very since close that to time. It. it has been uh, like our like some of our fathers have any. This is the first time mm-hmm. that they're seeing an actual, um, you know, like an actual for real. It's a possibility. It's a like, giant possibility. It's been right so now. long, and it's so. Close, it's we're so close break. to that. Not a lot of people realize that mm-hmm. how close we are. Like we're, we have never been this close to uh, freaking out. Like all everything going the, fuck nuts, crazy. The problem with martial law is, I think it will not help anything. It will only escalate things very rapidly. Yeah, I think once you know, and it's not that the stores don't have enough to put on the shelves. It's that they can't keep them stocked fast enough, and that's why they're closing. They still get trucks trucks coming in. Okay, that's the right. big thing right now is the essential people have to keep working. Right. I work construction, so it's like I have, you know, a very low risk of contracting anything or giving anybody anything or catching anything because I don't work around people very much. I have a few people I work around and then I'm outside all day. Yeah. yeah. Constructing. If but if they you know, if, if it ends up to where we all have to stay home for fifteen days, say a month even. Uh, it, it, no matter how scary it gets, we have to cooperate. I think 
right now is the perfect time to listen to what they're saying. Yeah. If it gets weird, I understand. But wait if, to if they wait are, to grab the torches if they and the are if they are exactly hold 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 the ARs and shit back because it, I don't think it's there yet. Yeah. I don't think I think they're and I think oh, they're the, using this as an opportunity. We haven't yet seen the peak of this. Um, if this probably, is the very beginning, we're if probably we, talking about getting into June by the time we're nice and free, things are back to people, normal. People have cooperated greatly, but the problem is the people that won't cooperate. And these gun owners that they could make us. This is the moment where you can make us look really bad, and you could throw us into a civil war. I think the smartest thing we could do is sit back. As long as the government is being logical and reasonable, we should listen. If they start kicking in doors and taking families or taking guns, maybe there's reason for concern, and we should figure that out when it gets here. It's not to that point yet, and don't don't be mad at the National Guard for running down your street, walking down your street. They're not there to hurt you it's the national guard they live here too that right. is an emergency response so don't post videos saying they're coming to get us they're out to get us they're doing all this unless they're physically taking guns physically taking people away right. i think it's the time we need to cooperate with the government and i you know me i hate i hate the federal government i hate everything uh, that they stand for mm -hmm. but now's the time to listen it's yeah. the perfect time to say okay we're going to cooperate because we might come out of this even stronger and, um, yeah, you know, with the with the stimulus checks that the government's wanting to hand out, I think might help. Do I, I really hope that that's actually going? I mean, of course, I hope they've uh, said being it an very American citizen frequently. who will get one. But my uh, my problem so. is, I just want to keep going to work. You want to send me a check? Cool, whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it'll go towards food because at this point, we don't know what's going on. The only right. thing I can buy right now, uh, I have to keep up all my bills as much as I can. And I have to make sure my kids have a lot of food and water, right. milk, the essential things. Because right now, it could be a everybody go inside and there's trucks with hazmat suits delivering you your meals mm -hmm. for the day or even your groceries for the week. As terrifying as that is, if this thing is as serious as they're playing it to be, we need to cooperate. Yeah. Then again, like I said, and I'll go on note for saying this, if anything gets weird, I understand an uprising. I get it. I get it. Because we've we've both sides have been pushed too long into this corner of the, a lot of people. I'm surprised aren't taking this as the opportunity to either uprise and try to overthrow the government, or much worse, the government try to overthrow the people. Right. It, we're in a weird moment to where both sides could pounce and jump because they're opportunists, and that's strange. That's we're on the brink of something very, very, very bad and dangerous. But that's if we same. listen. If we cooperate, we get through this, maybe we can take a, we have enough time, like I said, to re self reflect, look at our government, look at the people. We'll look at each other a lot differently after this. Oh, yeah. We're going to look at a lot of things a lot differently after this. We're not going to take so much for granted. And maybe this is what the intervention that <clears throat> humanity needed. Yeah. The whole planet's being hit with it. So that's a sign from something divine, whether it's nature, God, it's whatever true. you believe in. That it is time to sit back and reflect. What are we yeah. doing? What is our purpose? Sit back, re you know, reflect, um, reevaluate. Watch. You might not watch be what's going on around you. Really look um, and observe watch what it. you're going to observe. What you're observing. Make sure what you're observing is what you are supposed to be observing or want to be observing. Um, I think we'll all appreciate medical staff a lot more. We will yeah. appreciate. Um, the workers that you have to stay up, the truck watching. drivers. We're going to have a lot more respect for people that are going through be, not being with their families at this right. time and risking their lives to send you food, to get us food, to, to keep the electricity on. It'll because the truth uh, is, if the, elect values. if the electricity grid goes out, God forbid right now, if the electricity grid goes out, anything can happen. It's free oh, game, shit, and it's terrifying. Dude. Yeah. Russia could nuke us. Uh, you know, we could, we could, the government could overthrow us. This could be a cabal. We don't know. And that's why we have to cooperate right now. It's the perfect time to cooperate and sit back and just wait and see what happens. If right. we cooperate, they have no reason. Because if we cooperate and they overstep, that's when it's understandable. We have to play the cool kid in the room. Right. If, the, if they come up swinging, don't swing back. Unless it knocks everybody in the room out. You right. understand what I'm saying? We can't. But I also understand the urge to be ready before it's too late. So I understand everybody hoarding ammo. I understand everybody hoarding guns. I don't take that as a threat. I don't think that's scary. I think that's the best thing we can do right now. Right. Everybody needs to protect themselves. 
You know, the stupid people are, are going to come out. It's just the beginning. They've already come out and took all the toilet paper. They've already come out right. and took all the Lysol wipes and tried to sell them online for twice as much, if not hundreds of dollars per package. It's absurd. You're right. like I said. You're you're you're. We're getting to see who the douchebags are, and who the people that are going to be there for you. Mm-hmm. We're seeing a divide. We're seeing the good people. The bad people have pretty much weeded themselves out. Mm-hmm. They're all on video fucking people over out, out in public. So it's getting out there. Mm-hmm. So after this, those people, uh, it's like you think the apocalypse is coming. You do some really shitty stuff. You you break into somebody's house. Maybe if if that person's uh, a criminal, they murder some people. They rape some. They do whatever they do, and then it all clears up. And mm-hmm. everything's back to normal. And that person was normal before all that. And they did that because they believed it was the end. Right. They, you're going to feel like a fucking retard. It's true. They're going to feel like an idiot. It's not the true. purge. That's We have to stop no. being opportunists. I hope nobody uh, takes you know starts taking on that What's shit. What's cool oh about it is most of the world is at a sense of humor about it. I think that's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah, This is the darkest time our generation has seen yet, but at the same time, I've seen people laugh at it. Yeah. And that's so cool that we can laugh in death's uh, face like that. Thank God you know? for the internet. Sense of humor. If I can, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, man sense of humor is going to help with everything right now that's going to be your best bet is just laugh a little bit more spend time with your family appreciate things a little bit more hug your kids hug your friends show more appreciation for the people around you stay connected you know this needs to be an eye-opening experience we can't let it get us down we have to let it build us up what doesn't kill you makes you stronger right so we have to use it as an opportunity to better ourselves as humans Mm -hmm. and on that note i think this has been a great fucking episode uh, I cannot wait to do another one. Oh yeah, this gonna, was wonderful. Joe gonna, Exotic, you yeah. know, we're gonna Episode talk more two, exotic. Gonna, yeah, uh, get into tigers because it's coming. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. This was C and L. Take it easy. We love you guys. Peace. Peace.